Um, we are McGraw Hill. Quiet, guys. We are McGraw Hill. We're selling a marketing 370 textbook, just basic marketing principles. And that's it. And you're a professor? Yeah, I'm a professor. At, at what school? What school are you? At the bookshop. Oh, what school are you a professor at? Oh, SDSU. SDSU. Okay. Thank you for presenting me first. My name is Camille Rodriguez and I represent the um, textbook publishing branch of McGraw Hill Company. Do you mind if I sit down? Of course. It's so good to meet you. Thank you for being virtual. Oh, well, thank you for meeting with me today. I love what you've done with your office. It's so warm and inviting. Did you decorate it yourself? <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> I figured since I spend so much time here, I try to make it as homely as possible. And that's quite a collection of psychology books you have there. Is that more work related or is that pleasure reading for you? Well, it's a little bit of both. I minored in psychology in, in college, and I really love it, and I also teach a consumer behavior class, and so it mixes a little bit of both. Well, that's great. Professor Deeper, I know you're probably a very busy woman, so I'll get right to it and tell you why I'm here. Your colleague, Professor Muster, just recently purchased textbooks from McGraw Hill Company for his Marketing 377 class, and he mentioned that, like him, you also spend too much time creating supplementary material, things like exams and PowerPoint presentations. So he suggested that I come and talk to you and see how you might benefit from the features of our textbook. He did mention that he changed recently, and we do spend so much time creating all these additional materials. It's often a conversation of our weekly lunches. Well, do you think that having those kind of resources at your fingertips might give you more time outside the classroom for recreation or pleasure reading? I'm sure it would. Well, great. The unique features that McGraw Hill offers, in addition to textbooks, can itself can help you save that time that you're losing by um, giving you class exams and materials right at your fingertips. So it also would save you that time, plus it would promote student interaction, and it would increase your overall student ratings and evaluation times, those end of semester student evals. So do you think you have 15 minutes to spare to, so that I can explain to you how you could personally benefit from my graph test? I'm sure I have 15 minutes. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to begin by asking you a couple questions just to see what you look for in a textbook and to see how you would probably benefit from the McGraw Hill text for your marketing through seventy class. Um, do you mind if I take notes while we chat? Oh, go right ahead. Okay, great. Let's get started. Um, how long have you been teaching here at SDSU? This is my third year teaching marketing here. And what textbook are you currently using? Um, Hoffman. And how satisfied are you with that text? Um, it's fine. Could you elaborate a little bit? Well, I have no complaints. I mean, the content is adequate. I think my students get what I'm expecting them to learn from the class from it. Okay. Um, are you concerned at all about how up-to-date the information is in your text? Um, most of the information is up-to-date. Um, some of the real-life examples are a bit dated, but I mean, they get the point across. So would it be safe to say that using real-life examples that were recent, let's say within the last two years or so, your students would be better able to relate to the material trying to present to them? Definitely. Okay, so Professor Nieper, what's the average size of your marketing 370 class? Um, most of my classes are in the 250 to 300 student range. Wow, that's quite a large class. Yeah. Isn't it difficult to engage such a large quantity of students with the textbook being your only reference material or visual aid? Well, now that you mention it, I mean, most of my students are involved, or most of my students do come to me in the office hours and talk to me mainly there because I think they are intimidated in large class sizes. And I mean, I think they're involved, but I do see some of them fall asleep sometimes. So I mean, they're probably not that engaged if they're sleeping. And I'm sure that's disappointing to you as a professor. So it sounds like the lack of interest and the lack of multimedia material in your class to supplement your text during your lectures might be leading to limited student involvement. Is that a fair statement? I suppose it is. Well, how does this lack of student involvement affect your evaluations at the end of the semester? Well, I guess if my students aren't engaged, um, they must be not having the best time in my class, and therefore, I'm assuming I'm not getting the best evaluations. Um, those evaluations do actually mean a lot to me, considering I'm up for tenure pretty soon. So if we could increase your evaluation scores for your Marketing 370 class, would that help you? Oh, yeah. Okay, um, another question for you. How much time would you say you spend creating supplementary material for things like quizzes and exams and things of that nature? Um, I'd say on average I spend about an hour a week creating quizzes. 
um, about four hours creating the two midterms and final final exams, five hours creating PowerPoints um, for the week, and about two hours creating the study, time, study guides. Well, that's actually quite a bit of time, if I don't say so myself. But considering the ample time you spend creating these materials, do you think it would be useful to have these resources at your fingertips so that you wouldn't have to spend the time and effort creating them from scratch on your own? Yeah, that would be amazing, actually. Well, McGraw-Hill offers supplementary material to our textbooks, things like quality test banks and pre-made PowerPoint presentations. Do these sound like things that would interest you? Yeah. So if I could show you a way to get greater, more enthusiastic student interaction in class, increase your overall satisfaction rating, and save you time, would you like to see it? Yeah, I would, definitely. OK, well, let me begin by explaining some of the unique features that a McGraw-Hill textbook has to offer. You mentioned that engaging students in your classroom was a major concern. And the McGraw-Hill Marketing Textbook comes with supplementary material um, like visual aids, videos, and sound clips. Here's a couple of examples um, if you want to flip through and take a look. These are nice. Those are just a few of the visual aid examples that are be included with your text. But using these materials to supplement your lectures could really increase the satisfaction level and the quality of your lecture for your students. Can you see how this could improve student interest and interaction? Yeah, I think it would be a good advantage for my students. But to be perfectly honest, I'm pretty satisfied with my current text. And I'm apprehensive about changing to a new textbook because it does require a lot of time. I completely understand how changing the textbook would require time and effort on your part to adapt your lectures to the new material. But 97% of our customers, including your colleague, Professor Mustard, have been satisfied with the change and experienced benefits in the way of increased student evaluation scores and student involvement in class. Do you see how the benefits might outweigh the time and effort you would need to put into changing to a new text? I guess I can see that. OK, well, another great aspect of our text is that using a traditional hard, or I'm sorry, another great aspect is that we don't have a traditional hardcover book. Um, just take a look as an example. I brought a typical Marketing 370s book. And you can see it's a little limited in the way that it moves. So let me demonstrate. That's an average hardcover. Here is a McGraw-Hill version. Now notice that we do use a soft cover, and you can just tell the difference between the size and weight of the books. Um, the use of a soft cover results in a lighter and more compact textbook and makes it more user friendly and easier for your students to transport from school to home and home to school. So can you see how a lighter textbook would encourage students to come prepared to class and increase student satisfaction? Well, yes, I'm sure the students would actually take the textbook to class and would actually use it more. But I am concerned because the book is paperback. What is it that you don't like about soft cover books? It just doesn't seem as durable as a hardcover. Well, the durability is exactly why our textbooks are superior. The way in which students study the day requires that books be able to bend and fold and lay flat and basically go wherever they need them to. So while the hardcover book would fall apart under these kinds of conditions, just as you can see, if that's all that it can bend, it's definitely not quite as flexible. But flexibility leads to durability. And um, basically, our textbooks <coughs> perform under any kinds of conditions, and the soft cover allows it to be taken wherever the average college student needs it to go. So doesn't that actually make the soft cover seem like a more attractive feature of this book? Yeah, it actually sounds like it would benefit my students. Doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. You also mentioned that time was a major concern when it came to preparing tests and other supplementary material for your classes. And a great feature of our textbook for teachers is that the extensive, the extensive test bank and pre-made PowerPoint presentations for immediate use in the classroom are right at your fingertips. So for a majority of our customers, this is the most attractive feature. And just as a little thing to help you understand, here's a testimonial from your colleague, Professor Mustard. Do you want to read over it? He states right there that a quality test bank saved him countless hours that he would have spent creating exams and PowerPoint presentations. And it also saved him weekly time in creating his lectures. So I think you can see the enormous advantage to having these resources, can't you, Professor Lieber? Absolutely. Now, I want to make sure that I have this correct. You stated earlier that you spend an hour creating quizzes, four hours creating exams, five hours making PowerPoint presentations, and two hours creating study guides. Is that right? It sure sounds like a lot when you say it, but yeah, I guess that's correct. OK, well, I'm going to show you how this textbook is going to save you tons of time. So let's take an average semester like this one with 17 weeks of instruction, OK? I'm going to um, 
<coughs> so starting with your weekly quizzes, you're spending an hour per week writing quizzes in a 17-week semester. That's 17, week, 17 hours a semester alone that you're spending writing quizzes. Does that sound right? Yeah, I never would have guessed it, but an hour a week really does add up. It sure does. So now creating PowerPoint presentations for the week's lectures takes five hours a week. And this is going to sound shocking, but you're spending 85 hours a semester just doing PowerPoints alone. Does that sound? Oh my goodness, I didn't realize. And I'm just estimating the time here. I mean, it could even be more. Well, let's stick with your estimates for now. Now, with two midterms and a final each semester, at four hours each to prepare, that's 12 hours you're spending on exams alone, not to mention the six additional hours you spend making the study guides for those exams. And so in total, now brace yourself, that's 120 hours each semester that you're spending on material that our textbook could give you at your disposal. That is a lot of time. So I'm sure that you can find a way to use those five extra days that you're going to be saving by using our textbook. Oh, definitely. I can't imagine having five extra days. It just, just sounds so wonderful. And I do like how the presentations look here, but how do we know they'll be interesting for my students? Well, that's a great question. What is it that you like about your current textbook? Well, in my evaluation forms, the student said that they liked the headings and um, easy layout, and they like the pictures, of course. Well, let me just show you right here. I actually have it marked because it's one of my personal favorite chapters. But our chapter on the psychology and selling, if you'd like to take a look through it and check out the titles, I mean, compare that to the textbook that you're currently using. Can you make out the key points and topics? Yeah, and they're all well, they're bold here. And it does seem to follow like the same way I would present this chapter in class. It's, my current book, it kind of jumps forth at the ground, and I have to make up my own way of stuff presenting it. Well, so that's nice. great. And the pictures are great. So can you see how this book has all the features that you love about your current textbook, but is even more appealing to the eye and will be even more appealing to your students? You know, I actually can. So then, are you ready to let the bookstore know that, your, that our book will be available on the shelves for your students next semester? Mm, not quite yet. I'd like to sleep on it for a night or two. I completely understand how you feel. However, the bookstore deadline is next Friday, and I know that you want to have these books available for your students before their class actually starts. That is true, but I still have a few more days. Well, can you tell me why you're holding back? You know, I'm just un unsure. I'm up for review for tenure soon, and the student evaluation scores are so important to me. Well, that is the very reason that you should order our book. It has the most up-to-date examples, PowerPoints with the video embedded right into the slide, so you don't need to waste time putting that extra CD in your, your computer system. It has a test bank of quality exam questions, and our students find the website study tools very helpful. Could even increase their grade. So this is just the textbook that you need to help boost those evaluation scores and get you that tenure that you've been working so hard for. Do you have any other concerns about our text? Well, it does sound so great, but McGraw-Hill publishes four other books besides this one. Um, what, they all come with the PowerPoint, test banks, and videos. What is so great about this text itself? Well, I tend to believe in this textbook. I think that it has the best format. It has, it basically covers the points that I feel are the most relevant to a Marketing 370 student. As an intro to marketing, there's certain core issues, and marketing in the core pretty much says it in mind, and those are the things that our Marketing 370 students need to know. You know, I think my students will really enjoy reading this book. Well, great. I've already picked up an order form for you at the bookstore. It's filled out with all of our book information, so if I could just get your autograph right there. All we need to do is take it to the bookstore, so if you'd like to grab a coffee at Starbucks, then we'll drop it off on the way. Sounds great. Great.